Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of this newsletter is going to be, am I pushing myself hard enough? Well, this is something that every person struggles with who is trying to achieve something or achieve a greater place in life than where they're currently at. Is no matter how hard you're working or how much progress you seem to be making or how much progress you don't seem to be making, you're always wondering in the back of your mind, is what I'm doing enough? Is it adequate? Is it going to one day pay off? Even though I can't, it's like St. Augustine said, faith is believing in what you do not yet see. The reward for this faith is to see what you believed. And whether it's creating a new relationship or just getting a girlfriend or hooking up for the first time, or getting that job you always wanted or starting your own business or losing 50 pounds or getting in amazing shape whatever it happens to be you're going to have those days where you're going to have doubts plus you're going to have people around you who are not as strong as you are and who are weaker and therefore they're not going to have anything positive or encouraging to say and it's not helpful when you're having a day full of fear and self-doubt and you got somebody talking in your ear going Oh, that's a stupid idea. Ah, oh, you're never gonna make it. You should just give up now. Shit like that. But we all have to deal with that. We all have to deal with weak people who are too weak to pursue their own dreams that are in our lives. Maybe they're part of our family. They maybe they're friends we've had for a lot of years, and we don't really want to let them go out of our lives. But we have to deal with that. We have to deal with people that have less than encouraging and positive and uplifting things to say. And it makes it even tougher when you're hearing that shit, when you're having a bad day or you don't think that things are going to work out or you get into a fearful place. So I got two emails that I'm going to go through with you. And then uh, before I get into the first email, I got a quote on this topic that I want to go through. And then we'll get into the first guy's email and see what he's struggling with. And the quote says, you must take relentless and consistent action to be able to one day spend your life in your own way. Success is a process and not an overnight destination. You must practice infinite patience with yourself and your progress and learn to accept the fact that where you are in life is okay, but that it is not where you will always be. One of the things that Tony Robbins always said is the past does not equal the future. Sometimes it will feel like you are not making any progress in your career, personal life, your health, finances, or the things you most want to change for the better. The key to success is to be able to take action in spite of your fears, the risks, and the potential for failure. Simply focus like any great professional athlete does on trying to get a little better each and every day. Don't focus on what you do not yet have or have yet to accomplish. Instead, focus on what you can do today to move yourself forward and what you can be grateful for right now. Success is a long journey that often takes many years and even decades to achieve. You can choose to settle, be mediocre and average like most people do, or you can choose to take action towards what you want without becoming attached to how long it takes you to get there. Patience, persistence, perseverance, learning and adapting your approach along the way is what will make your dreams a reality. So let's go ahead and jump right into the first guy's email. It sounds like he's struggling a little bit and he's starting to doubt himself and he's questioning if what he's doing is actually enough to move him forward. You're going to have good days and you're going to have bad days. That's part of the human experience. And unless you're using medication or drugs to artificially suppress those negative feelings or fears or doubts, Being human means you're going to have days where you're going to be fearful about the future. You're going to have days where you're just going to – it's you're going to feel like it's never going to work out for me. So let's jump into the guy's email. He says, hey, Corey, thank you for your work. I read some other books about dating and relationships, but most of them were selling quick fixes that sometimes helped and sometimes didn't. Well, I found in life there's no such thing as a quick fix. It's just like a get-rich-quick scheme. It's just that. It's a scheme. It's bullshit. I was very happy to read your thoughts on the importance of having a life goal in a man's life. Since I started to do things that are important to me, I feel happier and more balanced. It's because you have a purpose. When you're living for a purpose and a mission in life, something that you believe in 
and it's emotionally compelling to you, even if you don't know how you're going to get there one day and it looks like it's never going to work out and you're taking action towards it, it's a hell of a lot better than working at a dead-end job and complaining about it and bitching about it and saying, hey, this sucks. My life sucks. Hey, how are you, Bob? Oh, man, man, fucking same shit, different day. But when you live like that, nothing changes, nothing gets any better. And the and I, we all know people that are like that. And 20 years from now, hey, Bob, what's up, man? Oh, man, same shit, different day. And then those are the people that get to the end of their lives and they wonder, damn, maybe I should have gone for those goals. Maybe I should have asked that person out. Maybe I should have changed jobs when that job really sucked instead of spending all those years there. Because when you run out of time, when your time's up, it's up. My only problem is being patient and accepting my current level in life. My grandfather and father died within a couple of months of each other two years ago. After this, I finished university and I moved to London so that I could start to pursue my dreams. I studied IT, but I still don't care about it at all. I did it because that was the only way to get a proper job and earn enough money to leave quickly. You got to look at it. It's a means to an end. We've all worked bullshit. I've worked plenty of bullshit jobs. Even what the career that I have now, I went from making half a million dollars a year and being on TV all the time. And when I walked out in public, people were like, hey, there's that fucking guy. Or, hey, you're that dude on TV. It's easy to meet people and have people look up to you when you're successful. But to go from that and have a nice house and nice cars and fucking sleeping on my dad's couch and having liquidated everything and waiting tables at a crappy fucking sports bar because I believed in myself and what I was doing, it takes a tremendous amount of fucking testicle fortitude to do that, especially when you got people who, who knew you way back when when you were really successful and they're going, what the fuck's wrong with you, dude? You're a fucking loser. You've lost it all, man. You're never going to make it. You're, you're a failure. You're not going to get anywhere. Like, those were really helpful. He says, I'm, he says, I moved here one and a half years ago and have been through a lot of challenges like finding a job, picking up the culture, learning the language. I'm from Middle Europe, age 27, and I know that I'm on the right way and I'm trying to do my best to pursue my dreams, which are creating music music, and playing it, but it's hard for me to be patient. I know what it's like, dude. It feels like you're never going to fucking get there. And I, One of my memories that I had, and it's funny, like, when I look back 20-something years ago when I was tending bar, I used to think, oh, God, I can't wait to have my own business someday. Can't wait to get out of here. Tired of dealing with these fucking drunk assholes and all this cigarette smoke. And this was in the days before they outlawed smoking in restaurants. So I worked in a bar and we served food in there. And it's just like, you know, I had this big, big bar and there'd be 20, 30 people there. And about 80% of them would be <laughs> blowing fucking cigarette smoke in my faith, face and going home and taking a shower and. Feeling like, damn, I can't get all that fucking nasty tar and shit out of my hair. Like, ugh, fucking hated it. But it was a means to an end. And I remember that like it was yesterday and that was like 25 years ago. And it's just sometimes you're going to have those days where you're going to feel like, am I wasting my time? Maybe I need to be realistic. Maybe I even need to go and do what those other people suggested. Maybe I should just go and get a job and pay the bills and be like everybody else. But to me, that was like death. That was like the end of living. That that to me was giving up. And after having had all that success and then made a career change and still not figured out, got to the point where I basically got down to my, like my last $20,000, that's tough. That's humbling. That's a big fucking giant serving of humble pie. Not a lot of fun, but the only thing you can do is just chip away at it. It's just like Michelangelo said when he was asked about his the the statue that he did called David, which is a giant like two three story statue of this man that's carved out of marble and it's like fucking perfect. And a guy was admiring is like, how the fuck did you create something so magnificent? And he just very flippantly was like, oh, David was already in there. I just chipped away the excess. That's the way you got to look at life. You're just chipping away the excess. You're just chipping away the bullshit. You got you to look at the, your IT, IT job. As, it's a means to an end. It's paying the bills. That was obviously the reason why you went ahead and did it. And you're pursuing what you really want on the side, which is obviously creating music. 
Repetition's the mother of skill. I've got I had lunch with a a buddy of mine that I've known for I guess about 16, 17 years now. And when I first met him, he was pretty much exclusively doing guitar lessons. He was he actually used to teach me guitar. And I've known him for like I said, 16, 17 years now. And over the years, he's gradually kind of gotten away from that and most of the income that he makes now is playing Spanish guitar. And for those of you that know anything about uh, classical Spanish guitar, you use every finger, which if you've ever watched him play, it's it's just incredible to watch the hand-eye coordination that goes into that. He plays a lot of weddings and different things and he's, he's doing better today than he was when I, I first met him and part of the thing is with the internet age, a lot of – affected his business in a big way because now people just go and when they watch a YouTube video when they learn want to learn how to play guitar and not as many so it's like the pool of customers is actually shrunk so he was forced to adapt his business model because of that and it was just interesting when I first met him he hardly ever played any gigs or played professionally now most of where what he does and where his income comes from is is really doing that and the more he does it, the more people are like, wow, you're really fucking good. That's really brilliant what you do. So he's getting more people hiring him, more people wanting him to come and play. And, and over the years, he's continued to charge more and more for his gigs because he's really – he's a fucking master of it. The guy can play speed metal like unbelievable. Like uh, Master of Puppets, like – if you ever watch me play speed metal, speed metal is one – and cl- Spanish classical guitar is one of the hardest fucking types of music to learn to play and be able to play. I mean you really have to have a master of your fingers in the instrument. I have a lot of respect for people that do that. Point being is repetition is the mother of skill. Excellence is not a singular act. It's a habit. And so by playing music and, and getting little gigs here and there and you do that over the course of several years, you develop an audience. You develop a following. You should eventually, if you like to write and record music, make your own CDs, upload it to iTunes. Do YouTube videos about that stuff. Do YouTube videos of your performances. Just the idea is to continue to build your clientele and it takes time. It might take you five years. Maybe it takes you ten years before you get to the point where you're so good and you have so many clients that you can finally leave the IT business once and for all. He says, I work as an IT support engineer. I earn good money in a nice office but I still want to change as soon as I have the chance. I hate both of my bosses and I have to travel a lot to get to the office. Another interesting thing is that I have less interest, less in common with my female co-workers rather than other ladies outside of work. Yeah, because you're working in a place you really don't have a passion for and therefore your goals and your values are not really aligned with these people. You're there punching a clock and you're earning a living. So I've talked about in the past many times about dating and your demographic. In other words, dating and being involved in activities that you really love and you have a passion for it because you're going to meet other like-minded people who like the same things. Remember, people who like the same things tend to like each other. Like attracts like. He said, actually, it was very hard for me to socialize with colleagues. It just does not feel right. It might be because of my age or the fact that I do not feel I'm in the right environment. I'd say it's exactly because you don't. it's not where you really want to be. But think about it. When you're playing your music and people are watching, it's like, Women come up to you afterwards and go, wow, that was really amazing. It's really de- really easy to meet women when you're in those kinds of environments, when you're in like a leadership or in a, a position of authority because that is the expression of what an alpha male and a leader is. That's, that's being strong and being brave. That's masculine quality that women find very attractive. He says – I am getting better improving my social skills but still cannot imagine to date any of them. What are your thoughts on dating colleagues? If you like each other and you like hanging out, continue doing more of that. I've dated I've dated employees that work for me. I've dated women that I used to work with. It's you know, it's as long as you're not acting like a jerk off or a creep or a stalker or creating problems or when a woman tells you no, you keep persisting like you see in the movies and getting yourself fired for sexual harassment, then fucking go for it. Hang out, have fun, hook up. It's that simple. Remember, people who like the same things tend to like each other. He said, it's hard to find the right balance between pushing myself or just stepping out from my comfort zone to make things better. It might sound silly. How, you, how do you tell the difference when you need to be patient or push yourself? Well, at the end of the day, when you go to bed each night, 
Can you honestly say to yourself, you know what? I gave it my best fucking shot today. Today, I gave my very best effort. And if the answer is no, and I was a fucking lazy ass today, and you say, you know what? Tomorrow's a brand new day. I resolve tomorrow to do more than I did today. That's all you can do. If you can go to bed at night and you say, I gave it my fucking best effort today. I gave it my best fucking shot. I gave it my very, my very best that I had within me today. Then you go to bed. Tomorrow's another day. You can make a little bit more progress. At the end of the day, where you want to be, which obviously is probably playing and performing music full time, it takes time to build a clientele. It takes time to build a reputation. It takes time to get out there and do it. It's time and repetition. The more people that you encounter who really like what you do, the more clients that you're going to have. And eventually you get to the point like where my buddy's at where he's got several dozen venues that he regularly plays at. And that's great because that's a great business. And business owners that have you come and play at their venue, guess who they know? Other business owners. And so the longer you do things for, the easier it gets. And the more successful you become, especially if you think about it, if you're playing regularly, you also get people that come into that venue on a regular basis. And the ones that really like your music, hey, when are you going to be playing here again? Oh, I play every Tuesday night or I play every other Tuesday or I play every other Saturday. Awesome. Well, let me get your email. I'll put you on my email list and I'll send you an email and let you know where I'll be playing next. You'll have people that will start showing up. But over the course of several years, you think about it. You build an email list of a couple hundred or a couple thousand people who are rabid, raging fans of yours. And every time you know you're going to be playing a gig, you send out an email. Hey, reminder, Friday night I'm going to be playing at such and such place. Guess what? When you go to a new venue, you're like, oh, hey, I got this new guy that's going to be playing here. Oh, great. And then you show up and an additional 30 or 40 people show up that aren't normally there and like they're like wow I should you've just made that restaurant or that bar or whatever that venue a bunch of money and if you're bringing customers that spend money in their venue guess what they're going to bring you back think about it and the more customers that you bring with you because you have rabid fans that love just love watching and hearing you play you can start charging more and more because your worth goes up think about it it's time and repetition. That's all it takes. Every successful band, that's how they got there. Some faster faster than others. Either, I talked about this about a year or two ago in a video. There's a band called, I think it was Fun is their name. And that song, We Are Young, it was a, like a big hit. They won a bunch of Grammys that year. I remember the guy, when he, he was accepting his Grammy. He was up on stage and he's like singing the song. And he was, like, he was talking about when he was doing the video, I think. And... And he's like, we are, and he's like, we're so not young. And what he was saying is like, they've been playing together, I think it was like 12 years. 12 fucking years before they won their first fucking Grammy. 12 years before most of the people in the world even knew who the fuck they were. Think about it. Time and repetition, it's all it takes. Now there's other bands that'll go and they get signed and like, boom, mega hits, mega superstardom after only a couple of years playing together. That's the exception to the rule. Most people are not like that. Most people that really make it, they stick with it because they love it and they have a passion for it. It doesn't matter if you're a musician or a real estate agent or an attorney or a doctor or a plastic surgeon or a coach or a psychologist or a therapist, whatever it happens to be, time and repetition. Focus on being really awesome at what you love to do and everything else will just fall into place. Think about it. Every single day of your life, is an opportunity to become better at your craft, to become a master of your craft. And they say that it takes like 10,000 hours to become really great at something. When you look at it from that perspective, that's what it takes, time and repetition. And for those of you watching that already have a business that's doing well and you'd like to take it to the next level, I work with a lot of entrepreneurs and business people to help them grow their business, to help them focus on things that really start to increase their revenues. So if you'd like to book a a phone or a Skype session, go to my website, click the products tab and book a session with me. So let's get into the second guy's email. He says, hey coach, I just want to say thank you. You've helped me so much and have changed my life and it sparked the man in me. I'm 20 and I've gone through so much. I've gone through divorce, abuse and I almost got my arm amputated two years ago. I've had 12 surgeries to only get 50% of my arm back. I've had many trials and lots of growing up to do. My parents aren't in my life and never really have been. 
but you gave me confidence and taught me how to love myself and respect myself and know my worth. I'm a good looking kid, but I've always been the over pursuer and nice, clean pushover because I wanted love so badly. Because my parents never gave me love, I relied on girlfriends and friends to show me love. So in other words, you looked for validation in other people. I used to do that as well. You were an approval-seeking person. You felt like the only way you could feel good about yourself is if other people liked you or loved you or would go out on dates with you or sleep with you. And when you make your happiness contingent upon the approval of other people, you're always going to disappoint somebody. You're always going to have somebody that doesn't like you. It's even like what I do. 99.99% of the people that follow me on YouTube or that read my book think I'm awesome and they appreciate what I do. 1% of them, they fucking hate my guts. They don't like the way I talk. They don't like the fact that I have really short hair. They don't like the sound of my fucking voice. They don't like the fact that I cuss all the time. Like whatever. Who fucking cares? Not everybody's meant to be your client. Not everybody's meant to be your friend. Not everybody's meant to be your lover. Hang out with people who appreciate you for you. And the rest of them, they can take their right hand and reach out and fucking choke themselves. He says, but I studied your book and I even took notes and it's already changed my life. So thank you so much. You really are my hero. I look forward to a phone coaching session soon. Awesome, dude. Thanks for the email and thanks for sharing your successes. And for any of those of you watching and you got a lot of great successes or just a simple success story that you'd like to share or have me to consider potentially of sharing it in a future video newsletter, go to my website, click the Contact Me tab. That's going to be on the left-hand side of your screen on any page and write whatever's in your heart and share your story. And maybe I'll share it in a future video. So if you'd like to get my help personally, either through a paid phone, Skype, or email coaching session, you can choose any of those options by going to my website, clicking the products tab at the top of your screen, and just follow the instructions. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.